Now we'll move on to a new but slightly related subject, that of electron configurations. And what is an electron configuration? Well, an electron configuration is a list of all the electrons in an element and the orbitals that they occupy. To determine an element's electron configuration, we have to begin by breaking up the periodic table in the following way. You'll notice that everything, all of the elements that are in columns 1 and 2, are called the S block. That also includes hydrogen and helium. Uh, although that isn't technically true in other applications. When we're talking about electron configurations, we're going to consider hydrogen and helium to be part of the S block. You'll notice that all of the elements over here in this green area of the periodic table are called the P block. You'll also notice that the transition metals right here con uh, constitute the D block. And this region of the periodic table of lanthanides and actinides are what is called the F block. So let's go ahead and do an example. We'll pretend that we've been asked to give the electron configuration of oxygen, which is element number 8. How do we give the electron configuration of oxygen? Well, what we'll do is we count from left to right on the periodic table, from the top row to the bottom row, in order, remembering that each box represents the addition of one more electron. So we start with row 1s and box 1 in that row, which corresponds to hydrogen. And then we count left to right. 1, 2. So far then, we've counted two electrons on row 1, the 1s row. So we would say then that the electron configuration that we've counted up so far just to box 2, which is the helium box, is 1s2. So once again, this number 2 comes from there being two uh, boxes filled, this one S tells us which row we are in the S block. But you'll notice that we're not to oxygen yet. That's in box 8 all the way down here. So what do we do? Well, we continue going, counting here, beginning with box 3, the lithium box. We count up 3, 4, until we fill up the 2S row. You guys will notice that because we filled up the 2s row with two electrons here, we can say that the electron configuration that we've made so far up to this box is 1s2, 2s2. But sadly, we're not to oxygen yet. We have to keep going. So we continue counting starting at box 5. Now you'll notice that this box, the boron box, is also the first block box in our P block, and it's actually on row 2P. So we go ahead and count up how many boxes over we have to go until we get to oxygen. 1, 2, 3, 4. So we just filled up four boxes in the 2P block to get to oxygen. Hence, oxygen's full electron configuration is 1s2, that's for these two in the 1s row, 2s2, that's for these two in the 2s row, and 2p4, that's for these four in the 2p row, going all the way up to oxygen. Notice that if you add up the superscript numbers in 1s2, 2s2, 2p4, these red numbers, 2 plus 2 plus 4, you get 8, which is also the atomic number and total number of electrons in oxygen. Now I need to teach you something weird. You see, as we go from left to right, from the S block to the P block elements, we eventually get to row 4, which begins with 4S electrons at element number 19, potassium. You'll notice as we move from potassium, here in row 4, to calcium, number, element number 20, and then to scandium, which is element number 21, we now enter the D block. Please note that even though the first D block element, scandium, element number 21, is on row 4, the D block actually reverts back one number. So beginning with row 4, number 21, the first row in the D block actually starts with 3D instead of 4D when we assign electron configurations. Something similar happens in the F block. 
as we go across row 6 from cesium, element 55, to barium, number 56. The next element on the periodic table is actually lanthanum, number 57, the first element in the F block, which is often shown beneath the other three blocks on a traditional periodic table. We should note that even though the F block begins on row 6, the first F block element, lanthanum, number 57, actually has a 4F configuration. Now don't worry, I'll explain these oddities later on. So let's now get to a question that I designed specifically for this lecture. I want you to write the electron configurations of each of the following elements. Nitrogen, sodium, and phosphorus. Now don't worry, I'm going to do some of these examples momentarily. If you want to though, you can pause it right now and attempt them on your own before you see me do them for you. Problem A asks us to write down the electron configuration for nitrogen. If we look at the periodic table, we can see that nitrogen is found in box number 7 on the periodic table. So what we do then is we start looking at the periodic table and trying and, and we count up how many s and p electrons we have in each shell. Now, I don't have a periodic table here on my piece of paper, so what I'm going to do is attempt to draw from my memory what the periodic table looks like. My apologies for not having the helium and the neon line up as they should. Nevertheless, we're trying to come up with an electron configuration for this element right here, nitrogen. You'll remember then that, we, that the first row corresponds to a 1s orbital. So we count the first row, 1s, 1, 2. So I write 1s, 2. Then we move on to the second row, which in this block is 2s. So I've now got 2s, 1, 2. Now, if I get over here, I'm in the p block, and p's start with 2p. I now count 1, 2, 3. That is the electron configuration for nitrogen. Let's now do the electron configuration for sodium. Once again, we have to look at our periodic table and realize that sodium is element number 11. So sodium actually appears on the periodic table right here. Sodium is the first element in the 3s block or sorry, the 3s row within the s block. So what that means is that sodium has the electron configuration 1s2, 2s2, and in the 2p block I count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 2p6. And then as I go back here to the 3s, sodium is the first element in the 3s row. I'll let you guys do the final question in this set, coming up with the electron configuration for phosphorus. Now to me this feels like a wonderful place to conclude our lecture for now. But don't celebrate yet. This is not the end of our chapter 6 lecture. You see, I divided this PowerPoint video presentation into two parts. So as soon as you finish this one, please watch the second part, which is my final installment on the electronic structure of atoms.